All right, sweet. Thank you for Chris, who told me to turn on my microphone so you guys didn't hear any of the intro. But um, said, apologize if I do cough because I am still a little bit sick. I'm trying to get over that, so try to cough away from the mic, but just to let you guys know. And then um, Jason, sorry, I answered the first comment in yours, and then I didn't get to the second because I was asleep, but... When I'm scalping, it also depends on your, you know, risk to reward. My scalping win rates normally, like, on the last account I was doing it, it was about 85%, but depending, like, 70, 80% in there, um, with the actual model, somewhere in the 60s, um, 50, 60s, so. Mm. Thanks, Tex. But, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and, uh, do a little top-down analysis of what to what I possibly expect going into today. Um, first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is hop over to Forex Factory. If you guys don't have this up, I will drop it in the chat so you guys can go there as well. It's where I look for my news. Um, and essentially, right, we're looking for red folder news and orange folder news. But I am pretty interested in this oil inventories news, um, so we'll keep that marked out on our chart just in case. So 10.30 and then obviously FOMC 2, 2.30 when the press conference starts. So we'll keep that in mind, and what I like to do is just go down to like a 5 minute, go to 10.30, mark that out, and then obviously I'll probably be off by here, but um, move this out of the way. Move this over to 2 o'clock. That's not 2, is it? Yeah, it is. No, that's... forget, it's noon on the... Uh, here. Sorry, I used to subtracting my time. But... <clears throat> cryptocurrency, I would backtest it. There's quite a few people on uh, Twitter that use it for cryptocurrency, so I would check out their pages. Um, I don't use cryptocurrency so wouldn't be the best task for that but um we'll go ahead and hop down to the four hour we won't go out to the daily just because then this vertical line will merge with this and it will be really annoying to look at but we reach up into this daily order block right and if you notice we just completely filled this fair value gap so that is something to keep in mind Um, and also respecting that order block. So obviously we're still in bullish structure, so I'm going to stay pretty bullish until we get moved down. However, aggressive up and aggressive down off of highs. I'd like to see us reach a little bit higher before possibly reaching for these lows down here. Um, so four hour, right? If you look, what was that CPI, PPI yesterday? Can't remember. Um, I was taking exams, but we ran this previous high aggressively displaced up, aggressively back into the range, right? So we want to see real quick. Let's go to the four hour here. No divergence, and I don't really feel like checking YM. But we'll just keep that in mind. So right now I'm bearish in the short term, lower time frames. Um, obviously, ideal target would be these lows down here. What I do notice right here, right? So keeping that in mind, right? Where is that located? Well, go from high to low here. It's back up into a premium of this range. If you use the bodies, depending on how you like to do it, right at that OTE area. So as for what we have done with our sessions, <coughs> Pop these out. Uh, I gotta go to like a five minute, right? We have taken Asia low, came back down, swept the high of the London session, came back down, swept the low of it. The way this looks to me is I want to see we're probably gonna consolidate and now we're getting a range expansion and then leading into the FOMC, I'd possibly want a move higher. So maybe something like this. 
right? Take out all this range, reach up into a premium of this range from yesterday before possibly going lower or higher. Doesn't really matter, but that is that. So back out to, we'll go to the hour, right? We have this little SMT with NASDAQ, right? And the reason for that being is we took this high, NASDAQ didn't, pushed lower. Right now we're just stuck inside this range right here, right? So that's why I expect some sort of consolidation before we expand the range. Not a whole lot on the hourly to kind of point out besides previous low. Right? That works like that. So go to the 15, see what we see. There's going to be a lower time frame fair value gap in here, as well as that previous low we marked out. Took that high. Five minute, right? So now we have this five minute fair value gap. And if we want, we can switch that around to looking just for the BPR, right? Like that. And honestly, I wouldn't mind a little bit dig deeper before we go higher, something like that. But uh, not too convinced of any price action today, especially with the meeting later today. Uh, time frame in the watermark it's difficult to see it's right here um i don't have any watermarks up currently but i will ask my friend am about that because i know he does that so i'll ask him how to do that and i'll do that for the next one um psychology that's a whole whole rabbit hole there. I can touch on it a little bit, but everyone's different, so it's hard. Um, um, I'm not sure, Pandora, because I don't trade Forex. And yeah, I'm still in college. I have a year left, so. Uh, I am just going to finish that up. Uh, what are the tags to trade? Um, that's just who I'm funded with. Yo, what's up, Fair Value Guy? Been following your stuff on Twitter. So. Prior to FOMC, I don't see a whole lot occurring. Majoring in accounting? No, I'm actually... <laughs> Sorry, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm currently sick right now, so that is maybe why I speak like I'm tired. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I'm majoring in finance, so I do take quite a few accounting classes. Um, full-time trading, most likely full-time trading, as well as I want to start up some businesses. <laughs> Sorry, that's so funny. I have to screenshot it. <laughs> oh, that's killing me. You speak like you're tired always. That's great. Um, execution help? What do you mean? Let's see. Around the 4,000 level. Yeah. I mean, if you're just looking in terms of like lower volume, anywhere in these 40, 15s, likely have some sort of fair value gaps in those areas, right? So fair value gaps, fair value gaps, fair value gaps. Likely to be responsive. But, um, <clears throat> Uh, I don't trade crypto. You have a master's in finance. That's sick. Can't seem the time access on your chart. Oh, let me move that up a little. It's not mean for that. There you go. Thanks for that. I mean, there's pros and cons to funded accounts, 
right? Like, you can turn like $75 into 2000 But you can also just keep blowing them up and paying them money, right? And there's also differences in tax benefits based off of where you live, right? Trading personal futures accounts gets you the tax benefits while they don't, et cetera, et cetera. Um, does news really have an impact on market direction? I mean, I'd say that this news kind of impacted the direction of the market. I mean, it obviously makes more volatility, but you're not going to get this move down, you know, a hundred points without the, the news prior to. See, I, I stay away from trading this stuff just because, personally, I don't want to take a stop that's like 80 points. Not 80 points, but you know what I mean, like 18, and take like one contract. Like, it's fine, but... Um, thank you, Kojoy. Kojoy? Kojoy? Can you please decrease the light of your background? I mean, this is how I have it right now, sorry. It's... I mean, I don't have it all white. Right now I'm on ES1 explanation point, which takes the current contract, which is currently in March of 2023, so it would be ESH 2023. And since the open interest is higher on the 2023 contracts, that is when you would roll over. The thing is, so, Alan, Alan Elaine, um, with a news-driven market, which we're currently in, especially this week, it's a lot harder to predict, right? Because you're going to have some sort of consolidation and then just an, a gnarly move, right? And with the news for this week, right, we have red folder news every single day. So with that in mind, it's a lot harder to predict before the move, but that's why you wait for normally after the move. It's a lot easier to predict, right? You notice after this move, you get some structure, aggressive displacement down, reach into this breaker, OTE area, continue down, right? So that's why I don't trade prior to news. Personally, that's what I don't do. Uh, I manually put in the SMT. Uh, the ESH, so this will be, if you take ES or ESZ 2022, this one now has less open interest than ESH 2023. So the March contract is what I am currently trading now when I am trading. But for charting reasons, I just go ES1 explanation point because it just combines them. Do you live every day? Not currently. Um, sorry, I have to drink a lot of water. My throat is still a little bit sore. Um, I'm looking for a reaction around this area. Um, but, alright, let's see. Well, here's the thing, ready? Let's say you try to predict this and you're wrong, right? Your stop is going to get slipped like 50 points. So instead of taking, let's say you had it set for like a $100 loss in here, right? You're probably going to get filled somewhere gnarly up here, right? That's how, how they work. Um, and let me see if I can go back to go. Let's see back here on like a, a five second. Guess not. We'll see. I don't think it's going to let us go back long enough. Oh, nice. I had some drawing. I think that was on five minute or one minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was a little continuation drawing. 
probably saw it on my Twitter. Um, but essentially, there's a void of liquidity where um, no contracts are filled. So, like, you're not going to get your stop filled in that area. You're just going to get slipped. So. Uh, fair value at order blocks. Yeah, I actually have um, order blocks on my list for December slash January. SPX recently made a higher high. Shouldn't we look for long so You you can. Um, if we go out to my hourly, this is what I see is we filled this fair value up, aggressive up, aggressive down. Uh, if you've seen the box setup video, this is our deviation from the range. Right. So I look more for us to put in a lower high here, depending on FOMC. But like I said, it's news driven right now, so it's a lot harder to predict stuff. That's why I'm not really doing much this week, as well as I have finals this week. So this is my one day break from finals. So I'm kind of just, that's why I was able to hop on. Currently getting a decent little reaction here. I don't know if it will sustain. This is pretty aggressive, right? Aggressive down and then back up. So if we go to a lower time frame, like a one minute, 30 second. I don't think I didn't take that low though. Right. I prefer just like that in that drawing, I prefer if we're trending, upwards right so we're bullish and we put in a low and it wants to take it i just want an aggressive move below right back into the range he follow bull bear on uh twitter that's essentially his setup that he trades spy legs with respect to futures i mean spy spx and es move very similarly throughout the day slightly different just because once an etf that's actually traded SPX is an index, not traded, just percentage based off of its holdings. And then obviously, the futures are contracts. Um, let me, I'm missing a lot of these. Hold up. Did I use Wyckoff? No, but I'm sure it's similar to like box setup, all of that stuff. So, I'm sure it's similar. I use Wix when drawing the bodies or my fibs, the only reason for that being is when I'm using like low time frames, right? Like if I'm just looking at price here, you're gonna have to use the bodies here. I'm right at the high. That's just what, like for me, it's like price delivered there. So why not use my wick there? Um, something on like a five minute, like, yeah, you could use bodies, stuff like that. That's up to your personal back testing and what you find works for you. Why don't we your data is day 10 minutes um that is not a question for me that would be for their support i am not certain um i pay for cme data on trading view and platforms so not certain um jonesy i actually have a little options portfolio that i mess around with i'll trade spx on it but i don't take it like obviously i take it seriously but like it's more for kind of fun. How long ago did I learn ICT concepts? I started learning ICT concepts March, April, April 15th, something like that. Um, my two points of interest today are these areas right around 4,100 and Really, I'm just going to be focusing on session highs and lows. So going back, looking at Asia high, right? And currently we just made the low of the overnight session, right? So and if you notice, we did get that little reaction right out of this area. And that's similar to the box setup right there. So if you guys have watched that video, you can kind of probably see that similar thing right here. Previous low right there, previous low. So, but likely that this order block will support price. Um, and if we do fall back into the range, then I'd likely be searching for a new low. But until then, you know, 
I just treat this more as a pullback. And if you go to something like a two minute, right, you can see. So we would need an aggressive move down, disrespecting this order block here um, in order to reach for new lows. I'm not trading Zach. So yeah, there is a little SMT with Naz there. Yeah. Excuse me if you heard my sneeze. But so obviously looking at this. I would say that ES is slightly stronger in the short term here. So, um, <laughs> chunky cheese job and trade full time. That's awesome. Which one? If you want to look up the current contract, it would be ESH 2023. That is March contract 2023. <laughs> Zach, that's up to you backtesting once again. I find that I prefer to trade the um, pair that is diverging. So right here, I'd be looking to short NQ. And right here, I'd be looking to long ES. Um, that's what I've found to work. However, if you hold it longer, normally this, because it did run the low, distributes a little bit higher. Um, but that depends on the time frame you're trading. Where's the SMT? It's lots of other things. Um, are you using PC or laptop? I'm using a PC. Trading today is completely up to you. I'm not going to say anything about that. So, I don't remember the time, but there was our reaction. Doesn't seem, depending on where we close this candle, doesn't seem to really be respecting that order block. Um, so we'll see what happens. But we do have seven minutes to open. Yes, actually, I don't know. How can you trade NQ and ES on funded accounts? Um, I just trade like I had right here. I just trade that ticker. Um, or if I'm trading MES, it'll be like MESH, right? Or, um, like a lot of them is like, let's see, I think on trade of eight, it's just like ESH3 or something, like 2023. They do it a little differently depending on platform, but. What are your finals on? Yesterday I took an econ final and an accounting final. And then I have a data analytics final and um, a marketing final uh, tomorrow. Today, I'm likely going to wait for FOMC. So, got our reaction out of there. Do you want to see what NQ is doing here? Right, so we do have the little SMT. You expect NQ to take this low if we're going to reach lower first, right, prior to ES. So that will once again give us another little SMT. However, that is lot smaller in comparison and internal range to these so less important but still something to notice how does your finance study help with your trading plans um i don't think it really does <laughs> those are high probability border border blocks right this is actually i mean could consider it a mitigation block would be an order block on the lower time frame, right? Because it ran previous lows. But yeah, this is a five minute, it would be mitigation block. Briefly explain SMT. Yeah, I have a video on it too, but we'll hop into here and just show you. So actually, we'll just use the 15 minute one here. Okay. So 
you have some sort of high and low, right? And so on ES, this high is right here. On NQ, that same high, well, we can use this one if you want, that'd be more correct, 4 a.m., right? 4 a.m., so it'd be this high. If you notice, NASDAQ never broke this high, right? Here's the most current high. ES did break this high, right? So that's diverging in price. ES made a higher high. NASDAQ made a lower high. So that's your SMT, which can indicate a possible reversal, right? That may, if that makes sense. So then if you look at this low, we'll just delete that. Look at this low down here, pull them up so you can see a little better, right? Here is the current low. If you look, ES took that low. NASDAQ didn't take that low, so there's another SMT. That's essentially what it is, right? And then you remember the one I was just talking about. We go back to the five minute. Remember I said ES is weaker, so we're likely to put an SMT in right here. And you can see that it's currently an SMT, right? Which one is likely a little bit stronger? <laughs> I would say this one on the 15 minute on an external range, right? But when you have a little point, when you have a point of interest and adding SMT is a great confluence. Yeah, exactly. Um, about the 2R 50% win rate. Is ES in a broadening formation? Yeah. So what he is talking about here is you see these SMTs. Well, a broadening formation is you have some sort of price action, right? And what it does is it takes previous highs, takes previous lows. That's your deviation from the range, right? That's where you're looking for your ICT setups anyways. Broadening formation is just that. So, yes, that is a broad information period. What's your schedule like? Trading, gym, studying, lectures, YouTube, stat? <laughs> yeah, so, um, and you can see, we disrespected that order block, so we're likely to continue lower. I would honestly like to see us put in a new low off the open. May not get it, depending on what happens, but um, schedule-wise, I normally, so I wake up, trade, if I have school days, I'll trade, then go to school. When I'm working, I trade, or like while I'm streaming, I trade, then stream, right? And then after that, or after school, I go to the gym, then I study, do my homework, you know, make YouTube videos, go to bed, etc. <laughs> so it's like, it's pretty busy, but. Could you show us all liquidity types so we know where the next step is? I mean, so you have, that'll, that'll take a lot longer, but I'll, I'll add that to the list for the video. Gotcha. How can I get an objective straight trading strategy? I mean, so if you look at something like this, right? Just a box setup. Essentially the box setup is you have some sort of consolidation range. We're just gonna do that. So this is like one of my favorite entry models currently. You have some sort of consolidation range. Doesn't really matter where it is, right? You get an aggressive move out, an aggressive move back in, retest low. So your objective, your objective trading strategy out of this would be when you find this deviation from the range, you identify the consolidation. There's your risk to reward, right? You'd want to target there or some low hanging fruit objective. And there is a trading strategy, right? So you just have to have some sort of trading rule. So if we go apply that to the current price action here, right? This one is a little bit more risky just due to, we just had open, right? And we took this low. So um, I'll finish explaining this because we took that low. We're likely to see this high, right? There's your broadening formation. Go to a lower time frame. It's a lot easier to see. Let me draw it out for those who want to see it, right? See that? Here's your broad information, megaphone pattern, whatever you want to call it. But as for the box setup, right? You have an aggressive move out of the range, back into the range. You identify a previous low or high, 
that's your entry and then you like target obviously this one's a lot more risky i prefer my box setups to be fairly quick um let me find i'll find an example really quick from my twitter yesterday a few days ago okay right here Um, okay, we'll just pull it up here, right? And so if you look, this was, I was doing this in the stream on Tuesday, or no, Monday, right? So this was just a little deviation, 30 second fair value gap, right? Here is our consolidation range. And then this is where you notice a box setup, aggressive down here, aggressive back up retest this previous low so that would be your entry stop and then if you notice this went up for like 40 points but that is to make an objective trading strategy you just have to have rules right so we are bare month and week cool how much is one contract you gotta you gotta look at we gotta look at the uh the stuff um, I mean, it depends what type of contract, what you're trading, et cetera, et cetera. So, and what I am going to go ahead and mark out that I didn't this morning, mark out midnight open, which is up in the high of this range. Right? So there is our midnight open, low of this candle. And then our 830 open, which should have had marked out prior to because I gave that little entry there, but that would have been nice to know when we uh, said, oh, we should look short or not look short, but we might get a reaction here. Would have been nice to have this deviation from the 830 candle. So now we're reaching up for that midnight and once again, broad information, SMT, etc. right? NASDAQ likely it's going to take it slightly after. Asia high. I have Asia high marked out here. So. so I missed that one. Normally I mark that out prior to any analysis, but didn't do it today, so that is what happens. So, you'll see what occurs. Likely this is our intermediate term low now with the short term low on either side. And we're reaching for that midnight. There is our, you know, and not that di divergence settled itself, right? <clears throat> What's the vertical line at 1030 um, news event? It's very, it's yellow folder, so less impactful, but I still want to know it's there. I just, because that's how ICT did it. I'm not going to just be like, oh, I'm just going to move it to 930 open. I mean, a lot of times FOMC will make a broad information, right? So as you come into it, it'll be consolidating. It'll take one side, take the other, right? Does something like that. I don't really trade FOMC, so I would prefer, I don't know, FOMC always gets my heart rate up a lot, which I prefer not to do. I don't like using a stop loss and I get trapped in a trade for hours. That does sound like a problem. <clears throat> and I think you, it's pretty rhetorical on how you could uh, solve it. SMT settled itself. Well, for half a second, we were having an SMT between ES and NASDAQ as S ES took this a little bit earlier, right? And we noticed ES was a little bit stronger based on these candles here in comparison, right? 
But as you notice, NASDAQ also took those highs. So that's what I mean by settled it is there's not an SMT anymore right there. Similar to this one, we had an SMT, but then came and took this 830 low. So. No, so there's lots of different ways you can use 830 and midnight, right? If you're expecting a buy day, well, then you want to buy below 830 and or midnight, right? And the reason I think of it that way is, okay, midnight open. Anyone can buy at that point, right? So I kind of think of that as like fair value. Anyone can buy right there, right? So if we're going to have a buy day, anything below this, you're buying at a discount, right? It's like going to a thrift store. Similar thing with 8.30. Well, you know, you could buy right at 8.30. Let the news do your thing, right? So if we're going to have a buy day, that is your deviation and or where you want to be looking to get on. But I missed it because I didn't have it marked out on my chart. Um, and then like if we're going to sell, well, then you would want to see a deviation above midnight and or probably take a session high. Yeah, this would be a market structure shift or a market structure break, right? You get a 15 minute, we're reaching higher. But I drew out midnight because we're likely to reach into that area. Um, so spread, stopping people out early is more so with like FX brokers, etc. right? Like, um, I don't have it up, but when this is going, your bid and ask, so like right here at 66.25, it was the bid and or ask, this is just your last price, right? So if they hit the ask or the bid, but it's just going to be 0.25, right? So it's not as impactful. So there's the midnight. We want to see if we reach for session highs here or if this is going to be our deviation, right? If this is our deviation, we fall back into the range. Then where do I look? Well, I want to look for about an OTE in there, right? Because ideally, if we're going to continue higher or lower, we reach into this area. How can I make sure that my bias is right at least 70% of the time? I mean, that... Everyone's bias can be different. It depends on the time frames you trade and what you're doing. But that is like, that comes more so from back testing and looking at what we're doing. One thing I've been back testing is these indicators like this. Obviously, news driven is a little bit different, but how they react in relation to each other, right? So if you look, right, we have Asia, London takes it. We return to Asia highs, can't reach back into this range, likely to continue higher, right? There's lots of different little things. Like I would have preferred for New York to go take this low before going higher, but I'm gonna turn that off. So if we are going to fall back in the range, this would be the time to do it. Right? That's when I'd look for a lower time frame entry here. But if you notice, if we're going to continue higher, this discount array should support price, right? What shall I tell our target? That's completely up to you, right? Personally, if I was long in this movement, I would have targeted midnight and then Asia high and then let runners go until market structure tells me we're bearish. Didn't ICT say not to, I don't do everything ICT says, but I'm not trading before FOMC. That's, uh, what's the indicator I just showed called? It's called boxes underscore boxes from infinity trades. So let's see if we fail this low again. If we fail this low and displace, that will be our intermediate term low, right? Because it filled this fair value gap on this time frame that is violated. 
then we are likely to shift to bearish if we displace. What can you say made you profitable as soon as you learned it? Risk management. <laughs> I mean, the the thing holding me back when I first started, like options, etc., right, was, see, I'm not bearish yet, just because this is not displacement that I want to see, right? That's just the take of a low. So this is your structure, right? So until we actually displace on the low, but. The thing holding me back when I traded options and stuff like that was I would be in a losing position instead of just cutting it when I know it was a loser, I would like average down or do dumb crap, right? Versus now it's like I'm lo in a losing, like I'm just going to get stopped out and I'm done with it. Why I left options? Quite a few reasons. With options, right? Let's say I'm taking calls right here. Let's just say, for example, I was taking calls right here. Well, we just had an aggressive move higher, inflates the options price, right? Because obviously gamma moves it up, you move up and strike delta, right? So all that's moving up as long as, especially volatility off the open. So you're gonna get an inflated price, right? So like, let's say these were the prices of today. You're buying obviously somewhere up here as we're on a higher range, but then you're buying up in this area just because of when you bought. Let's say we just go down back to my, you know, even entry price here, I'd most likely be down, right? Just because I bought and inflated, once it settles down, now I'm back lower. Versus with futures, you know, let's say I bought right there, I'm sitting break even right now. I know that, which I'm not going to buy right there, but. And now you can see we're making a little broad information in here, right? So we'll see. I likely want this to reach a little bit higher here. Just reach for Asia high. That'd make the most sense to me. How old am I? I'm 21. I can definitely be wrong here, but normally besides midnight, if we're going to fall back in the range, that's fine. But besides midnight open, giving us this bearish look, if we're going to continue up, it normally wants to reach for session highs and lows, right? So, but obviously we do have this deviation. Volatility and option premiums can also make your trade more profitable. Yeah, so what I do if I'm trading options, right? Like, we'll go to a one minute chart and I'll just look. Let's say I wanted to get long off the open. I'm going to buy this candle here right when we get a move against me what that does is then it deflates the options price right so then you're getting in with better risk reward than waiting for you know let's say people would say confirmation right so that's what i did the other day um is like we had a super aggressive move against me it was something like this right and i bought calls down here and then like as it settled i was still like break even before I got out, but looks like fun. So there, there was our deviation. We'll see if we fall back in. Really, I don't care too much. Nasdaq reaching pretty, pretty nicely up there to the twelve hundred. Yeah. How do you prevent fake outs? What do you mean? Like, I, I don't really like you're going to have price fake you out. That's what your stop loss is for. How did you find out that you're ready for a live trade? Uh, so I never actually like paper traded because my mindset is if I'm going to be learning something, I want to do it with a completely logical mind, right? Even if you're in paper trading, right, you still want to win, right? So like if you were long paper trading in here, right, you still wanted to go up, right? Versus when I was learning, if I was like, okay, let's see what price does. I could care less if it goes long or short, right? I just want to see what happens. 
So I actually never demo traded. I just um, just watched price for a few like a month and a half. Yeah, so this live will be posted when I am when I'm done. All my stuff that I do on my channel, it, it just stays around. So, <clears throat> and obviously, like I'm not trying to enter trades in here because look, we have this range. We're stuck in a range. Think about it ICT wise, right? Let's say this whole range was a, you know, four hour candle of Aza session. Are you gonna just trade in the middle of Aza session, right? No, you're gonna wait for a high or a low to be taken, right? That's my mindset even on smaller time frames, right? This is a five minute. So what, right? Treat it the same as how I treat higher time frames. Yeah, that's great. items you look for before a trade I mean essentially the main things I look for before a trade is do I have my displacement are all my entry criteria met do I have a target and do I have a defined stop um, I used to have problems where it's like well yeah I want to enter a trade here but I wouldn't have a defined stop and then it would invalidate me and I'd still be in the position right I don't want to do that anymore <laughs> right I like I don't do that anymore and the reason being is like okay right? I wouldn't have my stop right here because I'm fine with it going a little lower. Like this is where I would be invalidated. So it's like, why would I put my stop up there? You got to have a defined stop that meets your criteria and rules. So that way you can adjust your position size accordingly. I have experience with Ninja Trader and Trader Bait. Not really. I, I usually sit on the lower time frames a lot, but I'm just I'm trying to chill out to there. Right. But if we go to something like the five second, remember what I said about aggressive down and aggressive up after running lows? So look at this. Where's our aggressive move? Down and up, right? Once you recognize that, then you recognize the consolidation. Oh, aggressive down, aggressive up. Where's our consolidation? Well, really anywhere in here, right? So it could retest anywhere in here before it goes long. Ideally, you'd want a break below that. Like, and then another aggressive down, aggressive up. Right? This is obviously a five second chart, so you can get really lost in it, right? And that's what I mean. If we don't get an aggressive move right back up here, well, then likely this low is going to be invalidated. So, but we're going to hop off the five second, right? So, um, um, how are finals? So I still have two left, but they're all right. Not too bad. Do I trade a small account the same as a large account? Yeah. I base my... It's all based off of, like, percentage of your account and, like, right? Obviously, if you have a smaller account, you're going to have to maybe risk a little bit more. Okay, this is not... I don't really like this fake move up. I feel like this is kind of fake. I prefer to go reach lower now. But I don't know. I just hate the way when it leaves lows like that. Right? I just don't like that. It can go higher, but like, if I'm going to be bullish on something, I want it to reach below it and come back up. Or have an SMT, which, you know, maybe it did have an SMT. Right? So I guess it did have an SMT. I definitely not paying attention to that. Because I normally have it on my side screen, but I have a lot of other things up so that makes a little more sense but like i said normally the structure i want when i'm trying to play a continuation bullish is i want right so we're bullish it's this setup right here right there so there's our reach for asia highs there 
So that's why I'm going to go back out and sit on the five minute. Right now. No, I'm not going to trade. You have a risk management video. Um, I don't, but if you look up here, I'll drop his YouTube in the, the channel real quick. He, he does a good job of, uh, going over fixed risks versus variable risk. Um, and he's like one of my people I look up to. So, but I personally, the reason I risk the same amount every trade, I don't like decrease it is like this, right? We'll do three of them because that is what we're going to do. That is weird that it did not. So let's say you're just trading two R. point out five that's really annoying okay let's say you're trading two r and for simplicity's sake we're risking a hundred dollars per trade let's take your loss a loss on this one right you're at a hundred now let's say you reduce your position size by 0.5 like you go from one percent to two percent right now you're only risking 50 bucks on this right if you get a winner well okay now you're so this was minus a hundred bucks Sorry, this, here, I'll do this. If you reduce your position size in half, now you're only making a hundred bucks on this trade versus if you kept it the same, that's two R, you're making 200. So instead of being up, now you're break even, right? Then let's say you re re move it back up <clears throat> to your normal position size because you're in a winner, you take a loss. Now you're down a hundred bucks instead of if you kept it the same the whole time, you would make 200 bucks here. Right, and you'd be break even, right? So that's my mindset on risk and why I just keep it same the whole time. Um, but obviously, that's up to personal back testing and your system, right? Like I, I'm not your system. Um, so we did take Asia high there. So, um, yeah, Trader T, he had a insane day on Friday, but uh, let's see one thing. Let's see, we took Asia high on. So we do have this divergence as well, right? Notice that? So this is where you'd be looking short. Sorry, I got a little busy um, talking about stuff. But this is where you'd wanna be looking short, right? Because you took session high. If we do get displacement back down, you'd wanna look short and then, or you wouldn't want to, but that's what I would do. And I would target either OTE of this area, right? Which you notice we have equal lows right into a discount or, you know, liquidity, whatever that is. But this isn't looking super hot for shorts as we reach into this mid fair value gap and immediately pop right out, right? So, but we're playing around midnight open, so. A little confused on your comment, SMT and talking Asia. <clears throat> I'm not sure what you're trying to ask. Uh, stat trading is the Discord I work in, so these type of streams, um, I do lunch streams three times a week, and then on Friday it's either a morning open stream like this or a lunch stream. Um, and that is what I do in there. And then we have a futures chat where we all discuss stuff and then... I also post more like my current ideas, other things like that. So, um, so when you have a fair value gap after an order block, that's a high probability order block, right? So, if you notice, right, these series of up close candles line up right with that previous high. So I'm just going to keep this line. This would be our 15 minute or our series of order blocks so this would be a high probability order block right here right. you go to a 15 minute chart you can see that's why i use the series because a series on a five minute of three candles is a 15 minute candle right that's how time aggregations work so i'm interested to see if this is going to be our deviation from the range uh one sec
So that's what I'm interested to see. But sorry, answering some question. Goals with trading. Um, goals with trading is to create revenue, essentially create income to then put into other assets that generate me income, such as real estate and or long term holdings. Yeah, if you go to my education channel, I have a video on SMT. Maybe I'll remake it. Um, if you guys see any videos on my channels that you want remade, um, a lot of them are like from earlier, you know, in the spring or summer. If you are like, oh, I want more information on this, like, can you remake it? Just send me a DM or comment. DMs are probably better for that stuff because um, a lot of time comments get missed, stuff like that. No Bitcoin investment? Not currently, no. Um, it also kind of depends on what the <laughs> US does with CB, uh, central big deal or central big currency or whatever. So that's a little sketchy. Some words on market maker models. So essentially, we'll go to the five minute. This is kind of one. So I'm going to delete all these drawings besides midnight. And Asia high. Here we'll keep this. Right. So looking back on it, definitely could have done a little better this morning with analysis, but that's fine. Um, so we had Asia high, right? So that's Asia high. So if we are going to have a long day, like I said, kind of in here, that's what we want to be targeting, right? After midnight, see midnight was respected for a little bit, but this would be are like original consolidation, right? So you just want to identify original consolidation. Most likely if you're trading ICT, um, you are targeting that original consolidation in a form of external liquidity already, but you reach down into a point of interest, in this case, five minute BPR. Um, this would be our smart money reversal. And although it kind of can, this is the confirmation here. And I don't know if we really got a second leg our, this would be our reaccumulation to redistribute a little bit higher. But essentially what you're doing is you're taking price action. Excuse my drawing, it's going to be really crappy, right? You're taking price action. You have some sort of high or low here, right? So that's your original consolidation. That's your what you're targeting, right? This is our smart money reversal. Normally you want this to be at a higher time frame point of interest. Right? Once you confirm that smart money reversal, well then now you know that you're from the buy side of the curve to the sell side of the curve, right? So on this side you want to be looking for sales, for sells, and normally get your first leg, second leg, and that's where if you've heard the silver bullet you get your second leg of distribution to target that original consolidation. And a lot of times you go from, okay, this market maker model, then you go into a buy model. And where would you target on this one? Right there. And what else also is that? Broad information, you know, power of three. It all just kind of, kind of goes together, right? So hopefully that kind of helps. Um, if you look up my live with Sniper, um, he does a great job explaining it. What time is Asia high? Um, well, it's it's just the overnight high, not during three o'clock to kind of um, seven ish. That's London, so. Live with sniper. Yeah, if you go back, let me pull up my YouTube to show you. So if you pull up my channel, right, and I have this playlist, live stream guests, and you can go through this and you see this one, MMXM Live with Sniper. You check that out, he does a great job explaining. So as well as Ben did a pretty good job as well. Um yeah, 
what time frames are you usually firming my trades on? So we'll pop out to this. So normally I have my four hour here. I kind of adjust it depending. Like I said, when you use these vertical lines, it's gonna mess up your high time frames and make it look like crap. But normally four hour, one hour, 15 is what I base my trades on, right? Execution wise and trying to get into the trade is five minute through 15 second, right? So those lower time frame entries, which we'll see, I wanna see. I mean, I don't really like this price action besides, you know, could consider that little order block after running that low below 830. That would be your the long entry with stop wise on that. I'd put my stop either at this low or just the order block low, most likely order block low because this order blocks invalidated. I want to see that low anyways, but that is normally how I frame my trades. Um, I've been talking to AM a little bit because I used to get, I, I was getting caught up in the lower time frames quite a bit um, and struggling a little bit with that. So as I've moved out to the higher time frames to give myself some sort of, you know, actual order flow, then I can go down to the lower time frames, right? So that's why you don't see me just sitting on the 15 second right now. I mean, I could be sitting on the six, 16, 15 second looking for some sort of reversal in this area, but we'll see. Um, I don't know. I don't use Thinkorswim anymore. I think um, TFO may have some. Are you uh, usually looking at the four-way split on TV? Yes. Um, the reason for that being is it just allows me to see multiple time frames at once. Um, for you guys, because I am streaming, what I will do is, you know, hop into here just because it's a lot easier to see for those of you on your phones, etc. instead of this, right? Um, otherwise, I'll do these two, right? For my SMT. And a lot of times, if we pull up, let's see, uh, a lot of times I'll sometimes use a four chart on this. And what I do is I'll have my 15 minute up here and my one minute down here for SMTs. Uh, but right now I just have the two that I'm just willing to switch through, right? And I just have them linked so they go to the same time frame. Um, but looks like we are possibly getting a reaction out of this Asia high. So this could be our little deviation from the range. And for that, I'd like us to fall back into this area down here. If we're going to fall back into the range, right? And if you just kind of zoom out, you can see that, right? We took this high, we fall back into the range. We're likely to seek OTE or the other side of the range. Right? So, um, Give me one second, I gotta go to the bathroom. I've been drinking a lot of water. back so currently not shifting any structure i want to see what happens when we reach into this fair value up here if we get a reaction out of it we go and close below it because um, if we do right good example of that is you get something like this that you then you know kind of rebalance and what happens is you get something like that, right? An example of that, let me find one, kind of this, 
let me pull it up over here, right? Um, this type of thing, right? Run this low, move higher. We're already in a bullish trend. Rebalance here. And you'll notice it fills both sides of these fair value gaps because rebalance got to trade through both ways and then moves higher, right? Not as clean as I would have liked it, but still worked out. So that is something to keep in mind, but uh, let's see if I missed any questions. Oh yeah, I was going to the bathroom. Um, no, I don't live stream every day currently. Maybe I'll consider it at some point. It's just um, currently at school on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I have been streaming or not streaming. And then the last week or so, I've been having finals week and finishing up school. So I've been really uh, just packed. So that's why I haven't made a video for the past week. So we might just continue higher. Um, we have this point of interest that I marked out early in the morning. I was kind of looking for that more towards FOMC, but we'll see what happens. Sales tab. All right, one second. I got told to do something. Ah, uh, that looks so much better. Okay. Um, waiting for price to reach around forty fifty six to long. So here's. I dropped it in one of my videos a little while ago, but here is one thing that I personally found works better for me. But it comes along with the market maker buy and sell model, right? So let's say you have some sort of point of interest in this area, like a 15 minute fair value gap that never gets hit. If you reach your point of interest and start to reverse, well, then you are on the sell side of the curve, right? And so what happens is a lot of people will get wrecked trying to, it would look more something like this, but trying to short this, right? And what they don't realize is price seeks liquidity, right? In forms of highs, lows, et cetera, et cetera. When price is on the sell side of the curve here, like we talked about earlier, it's seeking that original consolidation. So I prefer to take entries when we get them pretty soon, if that makes sense. So I'm entering on the buy side of the curve versus when we come back down, right? So if we came back down, not saying it wouldn't work, but when I see that like that, well, now I'm switching to buy and sell side of the curve, right? So that is something I found to help me. Um, I dropped it in one of my videos for like 30 seconds. I think I just labeled it secret sauce. <laughs> I was just having a good time, but, um, that is something to consider, right? Like, let's see if there's, uh, it was on a five minute the other day, right? Obviously this one did work, right? We had that SMT in the point of interest, kind of a confluence. Um, let me try to find one like this, right? So we have this BPR, you know, aggressive move, aggressive up, aggressive down, right? But if you notice, we already are in a bullish trend. L2 displaced below these lows, right? And reaching higher. When we get up here, are we likely to get a reaction out of this or are we likely to search for liquidity in forms of highs and lows? Well, I would say the latter, right? So you kind of have to know when to use it and when not to. So like for this one, we're in a bullish day already. We put in these equal lows. I wouldn't really just long this right away. That's my personal strategy. 
right? Like I would rather wait for a confirmation setup, which I've talked about, which if you notice, we're gonna have a fair value gap on a lower time frame right in here, as we have a five minute candle that has aggressive down, aggressive up. By doing that, we're going to create a fair value gap in this area. So I would wait for something like that. And then what you can do, or what I do, is manage my risk to this low, targeting wherever, versus having to enter in here and manage my risk to that low, right? So a little bit of that is what I do. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, I missed quite a bit. Uh, Dow good bar. You can use the Dow. I just like I you've probably heard of on my other streams. I just say the Dow be wild in. and the Dow is normally leading or lagging, right? So if we just go here, add in a third screen, pull up the Dow. Dow is normally doing some crazy stuff, which it wasn't too crazy today. Looks like it had that little SMT at the low, and looks like it provided a better entry in terms of this long, right? But if you notice, it lags quite a bit or leads. Right now it's lagging. So I personally prefer to look at just NASDAQ and ES, and that way I don't get as overwhelmed either. Um, so, but the one thing you can notice is like if you're looking for a short here, right up in here, which one would you likely want to take? Well, Dow is obviously weaker right now. Like you just go look at its one minute chart. We're trending on NASDAQ and ES, while Dow is just consolidating, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Um, we'll go back here. No displacement out of there. You notice, right? Cannot even displace to even get into this five minute fair value gap or this little mitigation block here. Um, 40, 56. Yeah, I know where you're talking. You're talking about this order block, right? Essentially the wick of it. Um, similar thing. I would just watch, I personally watch lower time frame entries because I don't like to just blindly enter. I'd rather enter, if you think about when you try to just catch the tops or catch bottoms versus, oh, I'm just gonna let the trend ride. It's kind of like that idea. Um, link to the box strategy. Um, yeah, I gotta go to my YouTube and find it. All right. Let's see box setup so here's the link to that in chat for um, the original uh hopefully that kind of answered your question on the dow i would say i i just personally don't really look at why i'm slash the dow but that doesn't mean you can't like a lot of people do well on the dow uh, i'm 21. um i mean i have it kind of gray right now like, I could do that, but I don't know. I kind of, maybe I will do that. That's kind of nice. Maybe adjust it up a little. I don't know. I'm going to leave it for now. I can adjust it later. I got some glasses on anyways. Um. Yeah, just dropped the video too. Favorite candlestick colors? I don't know, I've been messing around. Right now I'm just going with the ICT Classic, right? Um, AM actually sent me these these colors, so. Um, I did, he had white background, I changed it to, to a little bit, slightly less white. But yeah, we'll see what happens with the yellow folder news at 10.30. I'm not expecting a whole lot. Um, but the one thing about 1030 is that is when we get hourly candles, right? So we'll change the continuity. We go to an hourly, right? If we're going to reach up, if we're going to fall back into this hourly fair value gap, it's likely to occur, occur in the next hour and not this one, right? We're likely to stay green for this hour, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's funny, Richard. Yeah, we've been above 12 or midnight open for a little while. Um, but on the fact that we failed to break below or drop under Asia high here, 
it's likely that we're going to continue up a little. The only thing that is kind of funny is like, look at how slowly we're just kind of moving up here. So we're just kind of setting up stops. Usually when this occurs, you get a flip and a nice little drop. So, and by flip, I mean, we get new, you know, we just got new 15 minute candles here. Um, and then we'll get new hourlies here in a little bit, but that is when you change continuity on those new candles. Here's SMT. Did NASDAQ just rip or? SMT, there you go. Speaking of here. Yeah, I don't really know what you're talking about unless you're adding in the DAO. Yeah, I guess we have one with the DAO. I guess, I don't know. That I, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to this personally for me. That's my personal opinion. Unless you're meaning lower, yeah, lower time frames. One minute, let's see. But even then, we need this to take this high for that little SMT. Des Dixie's necessary to watch when trading. Um, that's up to personal opinion. I know it can help a lot of people. Um, if you know Ben, um, uh, once again, my, I'm gonna try to get the time frames up in here for you guys. Uh, if you know Ben, DXY on Twitter. I had him as a guest on the live stream as well. Um, he uses Dixie and only trades based off like if it lines up with his Dixie analysis. So uh, DR IDR strat. Um, I've looked into it a little bit. I haven't messed around too much with it. The only problem is like on days where I have school and I'm trying I trade, I'm normally done by now before the IDR forms. Um, but I mean, yeah, there could be something to it. I mean, look, we closed out of it here. Get our drop down. Um, I don't really know. I haven't backtested it, so I'm not going to pretend like I know really anything about it. Um, I know the basics. I watched the little video. But until I actually backtest it and understand it, I'm not going to say anything about it. VIX, I don't watch the VIX, personally. But you can, if it, this is what I'm saying, guys. Like, just because I do something doesn't mean you guys have to. Like if something helps you use it, VWAP helps you use it. Like I, just cause I do something doesn't mean that you have to do it the same way. Um, normally when I'm above Asia high or session high, I'm looking for a reversal cause that's where it provides the best risk to reward. But when we fail to break back down below, that is when we're likely to at least continue a little bit higher. We get access to no, that's just the uh, the strat bot stuff. Sorry. Oh, uh, what's your green candle color? I'm going to expose AM. He sent these to me. Uh, let's see. Symbol. Hex. Right there. You can go ahead and pause the screen and get that. So. Power 3 needs more explanation on those. I'm going to make a Power 3 video two days. Friday. Planning on it. Different indices on the charts on TV. I mean, you just open up a different pane, and when you type, click in one, you choose an NASDAQ or ES. Right. Um, if you're looking to add them, so now we are diverging on the lower time frames here. Notice that. So it could be short term reversal point. But if you, <clears throat> if you want to add it into the same one, what you do here, you can add NASDAQ in like that, right? I don't like that. I don't like the look of that, but I don't do it. But yeah, scalper. I mean, it depends my time, how much time I have, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, sorry, don't break down exactly how you mark up charts when you first sit down on your desk. Yeah, so essentially, the top things I do, I have a video kind of on that. Um, well, normally, what I do is. Suggestions, 
session high. Highs and lows. You just stay high. You just stay low. And then I look for displacement in forms of pair value gap. Lows, highs, not displaced over. And then I normally do 830 and midnight open. Okay. So those are normally what I do. Um, Kind of depends on the day. Some days are way more obvious to me than others. So on those days, I'm like, okay, I don't really need anything else. I have my one thing. If I don't get that, then I don't really want it. <laughs> I know a lot of people who trade um, last month of the year. Hmm. If you watched my last video with uh, Trader T going over um, back testing. I know he traded last Friday, made five figures, so I don't think he really cares for it. I haven't really been trading much this month, <clears throat> solely off the fact that I've been so busy with school. Um, and I'm not really enjoying the price action in terms of being in a news-driven market versus going back to, like, summer. I found the summer PA was just so much better. But... Yeah, I don't like the PA. Who's going to win the World Cup? Not USA. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're out of it. Um, I don't know. Messi's been kind of going off, so we'll see. I think it'd be cool for Messi to win, because that's like the one thing he hasn't won. So... I don't I don't know what you mean ICT, but Durga, my position was long minutes ago. You're missing the higher time frames. I've never said anything about taking trades, so I'm not sure. If you just go back in here. Right there. Hashtag three two A nine three eight. I mean we're not breaking any lows. These are our next current lows, so the bull it's still bullish until we break down into here. I mean, one minute we'll have a structure shift, but... But... Yeah, if you guys have any questions <clears throat> leading up into this 1030 news, feel free to ask them. We'll kind of get through those. And then depending on what it does, I'll probably hop off, go eat some breakfast. Um, one thing I am looking for here. See, Best box setup looks something like this. All right, super quick. I want it to retest those lows fairly quickly after the display, the aggressive move back up. I don't want it to go take these highs then come back down because after taking it this way, well, now we're searching for liquidity on the lower end, if that drawing makes sense. It's kind of scratchy. Trading hours for each day in order to control overtrading. I mean, I think the main reason with overtrading is people do things like revenge trading. Um, and then also, but like, if you've, if you have entry criteria and it hits, like, I don't think that's really over trading, right? But if you have a nice trade, like take three R, like, I don't know, normally I hop off and go. Yeah, I'll use the box setup on sub minute, one minute time frames, five minute time frames, really anything. Really, the box setup comes down to not where the consolidation is, but where you get aggressive down and aggressive up. It's similar to BT BPR in that standpoint, but you just kind of look left. Where is that low, right? If that makes sense. <laughs> Tommy T. My name's not Tommy, but... Um... I will look into it over break. 
Over break, my plan is to do the 2022 mentorship again, take notes, and possibly make a... I don't know why my live stream is freezing for me. Um, <clears throat> possibly take or make a video kind of just over what each video is about so then people can reference it. Um, do you ever look at the size of excess on either side? Yeah, I do. Um, and the reason that interests me when you bring it up is I did study market profile for a while, which excess in that was pretty important. Um, so single prints on the outside of the range. Um, I haven't really paid too much attention to it, but now that you notice it, I might start journaling a little bit. Um, I focus more so on the aggressive move out and back in, right? So not really aggressive up and aggressive back in over Asia high. <clears throat> I mean, so the monthly fees do suck in comparison to stuff that doesn't have monthly fees like FX brokers. Um, however, the initial costs are lower. And if you do receive payouts, they cover the monthly fees pretty easily. So. Um, how do you choose a imbalance for value gap? Uh, I look for a PD or a normally in this range. That is how I, how I choose mine normally. What offshore broker? I don't use an offshore broker, so cannot give any insight into that. Show your FIB settings. Just 0 0.62, 0.79. That's all it is. With a black handle down, this would be a mitigation block once this high is invalidated. Sorry, my. Once this high is invalidated here, that's a mitigation block. The reason it's a mitigation block is it never took any lows or took any liquidity, right? So it can't be an order block. Yeah, of course. So we're gonna go and go ahead and see what these uh, what this news does. Um, likely. I don't expect a whole lot from it, just due to the fact that it is yellow folder. Um, however, oil is a kind of a, a hot topic currently, so I'm interested. Have I found my edge in trading? I'd say so in certain ways, but I think I can refine it and make it better. What news? We just have uh, crude oil inventories. I'm just interested to see how the market would react to it. What I am going to do real quick is I kind of want to change the color of oh, color of this. Let's see. Black. Black. Like a darker gray. Darker gray. Right. There we go. When did you start making consistent profits? Um, like into my trading journey or like what? I'd say a couple months after I see, learning ICT, studying it. Um, as for my trading journey, what is that? About a year and a half, two years? Have you ever tried? Yeah, I've traded options before. They're fun or horrible. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, I was. I only have experience with Apex and um, Elite Trader funding. I have not used um, FTMO, my Forex funds, etc. But I am thinking about um, getting one just to kind of trade like EU or something. Uh, I think it would be kind of fun and interesting. So, we will see. So, yeah, not really impactful news so far, other than looking like I want to move towards this fair value gap have marked out. But any reason for the color change? I don't know. I kind of just got not sick of, but like 
tired of my current colors. I was like, I just want to change. Um, so, and like, I don't know. I feel like I see things a little bit better with these colors. As weird as that is. Gotta hop on you. What up, Zenith? My homie. I gotta... Yo, wait, real quick. I'm gonna see if I can make you a... All right, you should be a moderator now. <laughs> I made Zenith a moderator for my channel. How long did this take till I'll click for you? Um, shoot, like just ICT concepts or trading? ICT concepts, I watched basically the whole 2022 mentorship um, until the later videos were put out. So like it was like 30 videos or so in about a week and a half, two weeks, um, and then about a month into that, a month and a half, and then two months is, like, really when it started to click for me, um, just the concepts, watching them. Oh. See here, likely to reach for that fair value gap. This makes the most sense in terms of drawn liquidity. Or at least to go take that low. I mean, according to ICT, don't trade lunch, which makes sense. A lot of people are uh, out eating their lunch, you know? And if you just, really, if you just look at when volume comes into the market, right? Well, I mean, I used to trade pre-market, which is fine after 8.30 if you have some sort of volatility or news, but normally I wait for 9.30 to about 11 is when I am done trading. And 11 is when London starts taking profit, so keep that in mind, but currently retesting that Asia Hive, so... Have I tried, I have not tried the DR IDR concept yet. Um, I have a few things I'm going to study over the break. Um, I have a break of school. Uh, tomorrow is my last day of school for the semester, so I'm going to be studying some other stuff. And it looks like we got reaction, so we'll see what happens when we reach up into here. Right? But. Yeah, NQ is definitely weaker. I don't even know if it will reach up into this fair value gap if we get a drop on ES here, right? And we'll see. But and uh, lately, I have not even just been like I just don't trade NQ. I don't really like it the way it moves in comparison to ES. Maybe it's just a little slower. Than I like. Will subtitles be available? I don't really know how to make subtitles. Um, on YouTube. I think maybe if they auto-generate. Let's go here real quick. One minute. Hey, look. Uh, how many points do you get to see as good to placement? I mean, it depends on the, the range you're currently in, right? Why is time so important in trading? I mean, there's lots of ways around it. Um, but the way I think about it is like if there's an algorithm, well, there's obviously algorithms, right? Everyone trades. I know someone who works at a, a firm and like they have an algorithm that trades for them, right? Um, <clears throat> and then they do a little bit of their own trading. Like they'll trade, what, like 38 million in SPY or something? I don't know. But um, algorithm needs to be based off of time and price, right? Like a lot of them are going to be like, okay, if you think about how stuff is coded, right? If you look at TFO, like you look for the closes of candles, opens of candles to determine where price is at, at what level, etc. That's like really basic coding. Um, 
So I like what I've started to look at is like if you just look at when candles close at those like 1030 marks, etc. So like when we get a new hour, right? What are we or uh we don't get new hours on the thirties on here we get on the new hours. Like when you get new thirties, what do we do right when this candle closes, right? And so if you notice, remember how I was talking about continuity with the flip? Notice how when this candle closes here, did we see like any upside at all? No, not yet, right? We opened, we saw maybe a tick or two. What is that? 77. We saw one tick of green, and besides that, all red, right? So that's why I think time is important, and more so I focus just on time flips. So when 15 minute candles open and close, 30 hour, right? Five minutes as well. And that's kind of based on also, if you look at the IDR, DR concept, like he's focusing on when the five minute candles open and close around those levels, I'm pretty certain. So, right, anyway, so yes, NASDAQ should have reached up into here. I just tapped it. But I don't know all the like Enigma stuff or whatever. Everyone, I don't know, I think I'd rather spend my time just watching price action backtesting than like going and trying to dig deep into something that I don't even know if is there. If you don't know where to start, check the description of this video and where it says if you are confused on ICT concepts, entries, etc. Check out this playlist and I linked his 2022 <laughs> um mentorship right there so that should help SMT is the easiest to spot for you? Yeah. I mean, if SMT really works for you, then watch SMT. Right? So there's our little fair value gap. I want to see it displace into this five minute fair value gap, right? But, right, and if you noticed, when did this occur? When 30 flip, right? And so this is where, like, you can use power of three in all candles, right? So you have your open. All right, well, this one's not a great example, but what I normally like to see out of an hour candle or 30, 15, right, is you have some open, you put in a high, low, close, right? So we get a 30, you open, put in a high. Well, now if you see that there's a high in the power of three on a 30 minute or hour candle, I think it was better on the 30. Let's see. Wow. We are just, oh, there we go. So if you notice, right, where does this open? We open, obviously this is our high, it's very small low where are we going to close right so obviously i want to see some expansion into here before we close but you can use power three in like lots of different ways and if you notice i would want this to give us our move done into here breakers yeah let me go to something like a four hour i think we have some usually just easier to find good examples right so the way I use breakers is you can, I use them as mitigation blocks too, but essentially let me find a good example here. I'm going to try to find like a really easy example. So it helps people more so. Okay. So like essentially this type of deal is, so you have your order block, right? So it went up, down took this high, broke through. So it fails this order block. What is your order block? The last, or well, this would be down close candle before the move up, 
or in this case, this is the this is your order block also here, but this is your breaker, right? So it's essentially your order block to the upside that is failed. So for example, right, see how this takes us here. This would be our last up close candle. We can use last up close or series. When this is invalidated here, that's your breaker. I don't use them a whole lot to be honest. Um, but looks like we got faded there. Is there an SMT? Yeah. So that's why it's important a little bit to pay attention to SMTs when they're occurring live, right? Um, can be a time to take profits as well as using for entries, right? So, and here's an example of a box up, lower time frame. I'll just use it right now. So you have some sort of previous low, right? Ran through aggressively down, aggressively back up. Here is the retest of that low, right? So if we go to 15 second, right? You notice display still below, come back into the range. This is the retest of that low. Obviously this is hindsight, but that's your stop on NASDAQ target right there, right? So 3.8 R, but those ones are a little quicker right now. I'm not trying to focus on that during stream because that takes quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of focus for me. Um, but yeah, so that SMT stopped us from reaching down there. So I want to see, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, I would prefer at least for this low or this low to be taken. Maybe they still do get taken. What is SMT? If you go to my education panel, channel and uh, look it up, I'm not going to try to explain it for like the fourth time throughout the live stream. Yeah, the reason I don't use indicators for um, viewing these um, is because a lot of fair value gaps I don't really care about. Like there's some that I could just care less about, right? Like, let's see, not really great ones, but like, I don't want an indicator just showing a fair value gap like this on my screen, because I don't care about this fair value gap. Why? Oops, wrong one. Why? Well, why would I care about a fair value gap that's just all the way up there? At most, I'd be looking into this premium and this like wick right here. So that's the reason I don't use indicators besides I have been using that little scalping strategy one that I had TFO help me make. Well, basically I was like, hey, I want a strategy or an indicator that uses this logic and he made it, which is actually insane. So we have another SMT right here currently, right? So normally not a huge fan of days that just go SMT, SMT. Hopefully this one just gets invalidated and we push for the highs. Um, it's not out yet. That's massive move there. It's not out yet. Um, hopefully we'll be out, I think, 15th through the 20th of this site. No, I also use limit orders. Yeah, of course, Scott. So for like, if I'm using a 15 second chart, right? Like on, sorry, let me grab some water. If I'm looking to an enter a trade here, I'm not trying to mark it in after this, right? What I'm looking for is an entry in here. So that's why I would place my limit on this low, right? With my stop here, predefined risk before I go into the trade, I would exit right there. Right? Right, because that's all I want. Essentially, what I'm targeting with these type of box setups and moves is a move that looks like this. So take out one side of the range, take out the other side of the range. Where is our range? Well, right here, right? So I just target the high of that range. So 
obviously you can you know adjust how you manage positions but I still use limit orders even when I'm scalping um, and if we pull up let me see if I don't have it up let's see it should be up on here let's see that's on the four hour let's go to something like 30 I don't know how it did today I looked at it for a minute right so I want to see 50 in a second but interesting that that didn't oh yeah so that one missed the fill by what 0.5 of the tick the long off open but for example this is what it looks like live time is this would be my indicator showing for short and essentially what it uses is it uses ote right and with your entry on this you have the box show up you enter short there, your stop goes on this high, and then first target would be this low, right? But obviously you can target wherever you want, but that is essentially how it works, right? So no matter what the trade is, because of how it's set up off of OTE, your risk to reward is always gonna be over 1.5, but that will be out eventually. Sometimes it's really cool to actually look on it on higher time frames. I'll pro I'm I'm gonna make a video about my scalping strategy. So essentially all the stuff the indicator does, I'm just gonna make a video on it. I don't know if it gave any entries here. Let's look at like I haven't really messed with it on the higher time frames. But like, for example, right? That one would have been a winner, they say. But for example, this is what a loss looks like. Oh, I don't know if it did lose. Oh, that one actually still won there. Because essentially what it does is you take your entry when it hits OTE, which I don't know why it's showing an entry right there. I think it's because of the gap up. It did something weird with the OTE. Um, but yeah. So for example, right, here is what it looks like is it has the setup, prints the box. Once it hits the OTE, you then enter short, which it repaints it currently. So the OTE would have been right here. Your risk goes to this high, and then first target is this low, right? And no matter what, your risk reward's always over 1.5 because that's how OTE works. Inherently, your risk reward's better. But then you can also, you know, like let's say here you wanna target 830 open, right? But I'm not gonna go too deep into that. Um, I'm gonna actually make a video on my scalping strategy and how it works, right? So. But. Uh, let's see. How do I place a limit so quick? Um, on Ninja Trader, you're able to just click right here, and it'll just be like buy limit, sell limit. So you'll just, I just have my bracket. I just click where I want on the chart, hit buy limit. Or like, let's say I wanted to sell right here, click here, sell limit. Already be in. Um, I've been experimenting with both um, on taking profit here, like partials and full TP. I've talked to a few people um, about it. Um, if you, Zenith was in here too. Um, he said that he recently switched from taking partials to taking full TP and it kind of helped him out. Um, it all depends on your personal style and what helps you the most. I am still figuring out what I prefer to do. So yeah, scalping video should be out. Let's see. Ideally I make it this weekend and release it some point in January, or not January, December. Um, I'm gonna be gone most of this uh, month, so I gotta make a bunch of videos to release, right? So, but essentially my indicator looks for inducement and OTEs. 
but a few other things. But I like the 2K chart. So the only reason I don't use something like a 2K or tick chart is like I think of time and price being important, right? And not really in terms of execution and price. So I know it can work. I've seen people do it, but that's just how I see it, right? But this is this is essentially kind of I don't know if it picked it up. Let's see. Yeah, so this is like this inducement right here that it got picked up. So then it looks for an OTE. And once this candle will close down, OTE to then short it. But um, this indicator, it's TFO. So if you follow him on Twitter, um, it's not released yet. But TFO has been writing a lot of indicators. Like, for example, I'll actually drop a video. Um, he made a, so I'll pull this over. He made the um, mentorship indicator. So it drops. It looks for the displacement candle, draws out the fair value gap, and then looks for those entries, right? So kind of looks like something like this, right? And this one is free, so like here. Um, I'll just actually drop this link to this tweet if you guys want to like check out his indicator, or I think you can just search him up on anything. I don't really know. But... Yeah, that news didn't really do a whole lot. I wanted it to be drop us into here. Obviously, SMT had other plans there. On the, we'll go back to the one minute, right? So you can see SMT had other plans for us there. So, and normally I'm watching SMT on my my side screen. However, I have not been lately just because of this. So, but yeah. I felt like I don't know what it does. I don't know. Yeah, so if you look in chat, Zenith was talking um like when to TP. He prefers two to three R because that's what he prefers or does best with. Um but it just it depends because like if you guys know Alex options, I know he does best taking partials versus I know a lot of people that do better taking two to three R and being done with it. It's really personal opinion what you have to study. So, but we're going to hop back out to the higher time frames here. Just kind of see what's going on. Don't want to get so lost, right? So let's put the five there. So hop out here, go to something like a four hour. I'm going to delete this line just because it's hard to see, but knowing FOMC is coming up, we have the aggressive move up and down, right? This is kind of the OTE there, which I want to see something. Uh, it, sometimes that, that almost meet the requirements for my... Uh, it, but it's not taking the high from that far back. But with that idea in mind, obviously bullish on these or bearish on these lower time frames to reach up into there personally right that's my draw on liquidity but right now not really interested in a whole lot and i'm assuming we probably chop around prior to fomc and then fomc i'm gonna mark out the range that we we're chopping and see if we get an aggressive move out of the range back into the range right or just something i'll probably just observe today you trade only one instrument yeah I just trade uh ES. I've actually been watching some gold and um some CL. But gold gold just moves a lot differently than the indices and other things. It's it's kind of weird. So I'm trying to learn that a little bit. Um just kind of experiment with it. But it it's it's kind of more trendy than the indices, if that makes sense. What type? I have a hundred K funded with the uh, elite. So, and I actually, I think I have like five days till the payout on that one. So, I'll probably. I think I'm gonna make a video kind of on the process of like, oh, buying an account, paying it out, etc. Crude, sole. Uh, oh, 
here, so I'll just put this in Futures Chat, so we'll screenshot it for you guys. So, Sol just said there's a nice little box set up on Crude. He's been trading Crude a lot. So if you notice, he took consolidation, right? Doesn't really matter so much the consolidation as the aggressive move out and back in. So aggressive move out, with a fair value gap, reach back in. So he's looking for a retest of these previous lows and or this order block to get long, right? And that's how you get your little boom, 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 right? Box set up. So that is what he was just saying in chat. So you gotta shout him out. Still waiting for the trend days entries video. Yeah, um, I'll show you guys something. <laughs> I have like, I actually can't even, hold up. <laughs> I have so many, like, uh, give you guys a quick look. Like, I have just a little Discord where I drop all these different ideas for YouTube videos. So, when you guys drop ideas where you want them, I do pay attention and write them down. So, anything you guys say goes in there. <laughs> so, don't feel like I don't pay attention to you guys because I do. Um, trend day entries. Yeah, it, it'll be a good one. Um, which one to go with the determined direction. Normally I prefer whatever one has a cleaner setup, right? So if we just go to, what is this 15 minute chart here? Clear, move drawings, move drawings, right? Which one has a cleaner setup? So if you look here, right? Obviously we have this divergence here. What one looks cleaner though? Right to me, ES looks cleaner because we get displacement out of this, and then where do we return to? Well, we have a nice little OTE entry right here, right? Versus NASDAQ here, we don't really get any displacement out of this, right? We just get this drop down, taking this low and aggressively moving up. So I would take ES here, right? Because it has a cleaner setup. Um, you can also just take whatever one's divergent. So like, for example, if you think this divergence is going to hold, well, when price is down into here, I know people that will just, you know, take a trade in here. And what they do is, okay, I'm going to risk this low, right? Like, okay, I'm going to risk seven points on NASDAQ because this divergence is here. If this holds, well, target Asia highs. Well, there you go. You just hit like a 13 hour trade, which is absolutely insane right or you go down to the lower time frames right so one minute what looked cleaner here well right here right hey remember what i was saying no real displacement out of here off the divergence well if you look at this divergence here we actually get some displacement out here's your box setup entry there right so you just take previous low or it might have missed it slightly I think if you use bodies, should have hit. Yeah. So that's up to back testing and just watching price because you'll notice one time, okay, they're diverging. This one's like showing a super clean fair value gap setup. Nice, right? I use the wicks, so it's a little different, but. So that's how I decide is just whatever one looks cleaner. Uh, yeah, so um, Alex, Alex, and everyone in that Discord caught the uh, the cells. I think there was a few <laughs> thousand percenters there. I was taking exams, so I did not even look. So order blocks, right? Ideally, ideally, a high probability order block runs a low. Right, so a down close candle between running a low and getting an aggressive move out. So this would be your order block right here. Right. Which worked and it also lines up with A30. Exactly. So you wanna you wanna wait for order blocks. Here's the thing where people get mixed up is right. Order blocks need to take 
a low or a high right, in a form of liquidity before moving. Then you take these last down close candles, drag them over. That's your order block right there. Right? It's higher probability when you have your order block. Let's uh, drag that over. Oh. Like that over, it's higher probability when you have a fair value gap after it, right? And so if you notice, I prefer models when you have equal highs, you have your order block fair value gap lines up all with, you know, your OTE, etc. That is your higher probability fair value gap and order block combination. And so we finally did reach, well, we reached into this five minute fair value gap. So like this, because it has a fair value gap after, even though it didn't take the low, we'll go to NASDAQ, it might be a little better here. Right, so this would be your higher probability order block. But if that makes sense. FOMC comes out at, um, well, it would be, what is that, two? Yeah, two o'clock. Sorry, it's noon for me where I live. That's why I don't know why this is showing. No, that's right. I'm just messed up. But two p.m. Eastern. Yeah, so two p.m. Eastern, and then the uh, announcement is at um, two thirty. The press conference, I mean. So. Um, with that, I mean, where are we reaching for? And we have a nice little hourly fair value gap that I had marked out earlier and kept, right? So I'll go ahead and leave you with that. Um, yeah, this will be saved. Um, it's just under, I think, live streams. Let me double check the, uh, I'll double check, but it should be under my live streams playlist or like live trading or something. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a couple minutes for questions. If you guys have any, if not, I'm going to probably hop off. Um, thanks for everyone hopping in. I know I did this with little to no announcement. Um, how do you take a trade when you have a huge point of interest like that? Well, if you haven't watched my video on lower time frame entries using point of interest, so let's say this is our point of interest up here, price reaches it, what do you do? Well, we're on the hourly. What happens when you go down to the one or the five? right? Well, now you wait for price to reach into this area, make your model, mitigate your risk, right? That's essentially what I look for. So, because I am not going to just take something and like a huge point of interest like that, right? And another thing you can look for, if you check out AM Trades last video, he's talked about this on news events. It's nice to have a SMT up into this point of interest to confirm that smart money reversal, right? Um, I left a page stream to watch. <laughs> nice. Uh -huh. yeah, hopefully that answered your question, John. Yeah. Um, next stream, I don't really know when my next stream will be. Um, I'm going back home to visit family for the winter break. So I'm going to be, I'll probably have to, my laptop broke, so I gotta buy a new laptop unless I want to stream from my iPad. Um, so I don't really know exactly. I just wanted to hop on here because I haven't done it for a little bit. I wanted to say hi to everyone um, and kind of explain why I've been MIA. But my next video should be out Friday and then should have one video per week all the way through the break. I will batch those out, get them ready. Um, let me tell you what I think I have planned in terms of videos. Just for those of you on here, why not, right? Um, so I have a power three video lined up, open high, low close, kill zones, top zone, top down analysis, trading without a market structure shift or market structure break, uh, draw on liquidity, um, using Asia and London to predict New York, um, and then, you know, other ones as well. So, um, but yeah. Those are kind of just the few that I took out of that batch that I showed you in that screenshot that I want to uh, get done this weekend or into December. 
So if you guys have any videos you want made or remade, so like if you go back through one of my videos and you're like, this sucks, like, can you remake it? Just send me a DM, say, this video sucks, remake it. And I will, uh, I'll get to that. But if there's no, no other questions, I think I'll probably hop off. I'll give it a minute or two for some other questions. But it looks like a few people are already leaving, so we'll give it a minute or two. And then also, I'm going to, I have a buddy who just trades micros, made 100k this year off of just trading micros on ES, so I'm going to interview him. I know I posted about it on Twitter, haven't gotten to it, going to try to do that this weekend. So that will also be out in the midst of June, or December. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to make a video on my scalping strategy and then also the indicator that goes with it. But... Um, Fire lineup coming, yeah. IDR, um, that's a, the IDR guy has a video on YouTube, so I'm not gonna try to steal his content. Um, thank you. How long did it take until your fib settings? Yeah, sure. That's in my trading view video as well. But um, is ES faster than spy? I mean, they're different instruments, so it's cause speed is like kind of relative in that aspect, but they should translate over. Because SPY is an ETF, SPX is an index, ES is a future, right? So they're tracking the same thing, essentially. You'll just say that for simple terms, but they do move slightly differently. Um, so a lot of higher time frame fair value gaps um, will give you a, a bigger point of interest, right? So like a daily fair value gap, you might have a better reaction out of, right? Than, you know, or it. We'll just say higher time frames proceed or like go have more importance over lower time frames for the most part in terms of where price is likely to respect. Um, but win rate depends on if I'm scalping or not. Um, so what I do is I have brackets already predetermined. Um, if you go to my how I trade a funded account video, I already have. Um, essentially, I, if it's a two point stop, I use 10 cons, right? So I already have that preset. Three point stop, I use seven cons. Four point, I'll use five cons, dot, 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 right? So I already have these all pre built. So I look at the setup. Where is my stop? It's like, for example, you know, let's say I was just shorting somewhere in here, right? And I had a four point stop here, right? Then I'm taking my bracket that gives me five cons, I'm entering, right? So I don't really have to think about it. Um, I also just can do that math in my head now because I know exactly position size wise what I want to be trading, but that is how I do it quickly. <clears throat> I mean, all my YouTube content is always going to be free. Um, I do currently work in the stat discord um, and then like things like paid indicators and stuff like I don't code, right? So I am not spending time or hours and hours coding stuff. So like that is unfair of me to be like, hey, you just spent two months coding this indicator. Give it away for free. You know, like people, time is not free. Um, if that makes sense. <clears throat> uh, 70 points. Well, that's because of the contract uh, rollover, I'm pretty sure, why SPX and ES are going to be different. Um, ES contract rollover rolled over to March contracts, so they are going to be different than SPX. We already had the private room. I've been in this private room um, for quite a little while, since June, right? If that makes sense. But like, I'm not going to stop putting out YouTube content, etc. Like, the only reason I didn't put out a video in the last week was because I had finals. So, in queue, possible market structure shift down. Possible. We have that SMT right now. Thing is, I'm not, I personally am not interested in this type of stuff until FOMC, right? Because what are we really waiting for today? Probably FOMC. Right. However, 
while it might look like, okay, if we break this low, we're reaching higher. Well, let's drag this left. What do we see right in here? Fair value gap, right? So now you have internal liquidity into a fair value gap, go to a higher time frame. That's into an order block, right? So unless we do get displacement below down here, this is still bullish, right? That's why I said, like, unless we displace back into Asia high, we're going to probably stay out of it for a little while. Covers, bro, ICT covers all of this also. Yeah, sick. Just gone from my channel. I'm so, I'm, like, if you want to troll me, fair. But uh, pips, ticks, and points. Um, Pips is more like Forex, like cents and stuff. I don't really know a whole lot on that. Points is like, okay, we're at 80, 81 to 80 to 81. That's a point. A tick is 0.25, right? Yeah, I, I banned the guy from my channel. Or just hit, hit him from it. I don't even know. How's your finals? They're doing all right. I have two more. So... But yeah, with that, um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, not gonna have you already answered that. I have not studied IDR, DR yet. I'm gonna do it over break, see what I think about it. But hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you think of any questions where you're like, oh, I really need this answered, just reach out to me on Twitter or in the comments or really anywhere, and I will get to them at some point. I am fairly busy with school currently, so. But if you've noticed, if you have commented, I do get back to all my comments, so. Um, if you explain liquidity grab versus basis striker, break a structure, watch my displacement versus lack of displacement video. That's what that goes over. Um, yeah, I'll try, I'll try ADR once I, or IDR once I study it a little. Thanks everyone. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.